it finally happened. You got your first job offer for a job besides the one that you got right out of college. You can either take this new job that has the potential for higher pay and new experiences, or stay with your current job that you have a great relationship with your manager and coworkers. Either way, this is a pretty big decision. Whatever you decide is going to impact the future of your career. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Tyler Warlow and I go by The Mengineer. I make videos on how to improve your life through your confidence, capabilities, and overall happiness. In today's video, I figured I would cover multiple scenarios where you might find yourself ready to change jobs. I'll go over each one, some things to take into consideration, as well as my personal opinion on whether or not you should switch jobs in that situation. If that sounds interesting to you, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button to join me along in this self-improvement journey. So I'm gonna cover a pretty obvious example right out the gate, but you'd be surprised how many different people end up not making the right choice here. And this first scenario is going to be when your employer is treating you poorly. This is generally gonna come down to a toxic workplace environment, whether that's from management or your coworkers, or even things where like HR is protecting the company and not the employees. This is gonna happen when management is constantly yelling and never taking responsibility for the faults of their own actions or even when coworkers are talking about other people behind their backs and forming clicky groups like what happened in middle school and high school. This can lead to a lot of stress and frustration for people as they have to deal with just worsening day-to-day -day situations and always feeling like they are on the edge of their seats getting ready to be fired. In this case, in my opinion, there is nothing to consider here. There's nothing that you need to think about. If you are in a workplace environment where it really is unsafe to work, where management is constantly yelling at people and blaming them for things that were never even their fault, or you're constantly really feeling stressed about the social dynamics of the workplace, then is that really a place that you wanna be working? If you're gonna be spending the majority of your waking hours here, do you want to be spending the time in a place where you're feeling stressed that entire time? Don't get me wrong, stress is not always a bad thing, but when it is constant and it's from things that are way outside of your control and that you are being blamed for, then yes, it is pretty bad. In these types of situations, you wanna make sure that you can get out of there as soon as possible. Do not waste any time. Go ahead and search for a new job. Take some PTO in order to do some interviews if you have to, but do not sit around in there any longer than you have to. A common mistake that a lot of people who are in this type of situation will fall into is that they start to fall into this thought process thinking that they are not worth being able to go to another job. They might think that their skill set isn't good enough or they might even start believing the lies that their own management has been telling them where that they're not good enough at their own job so no one else will take them. This is almost never the case and I am here to tell you that you are worth it and that you should take that time to find another job. The reason that you're feeling the way you are is because you are working in a terrible workplace that isn't helping you to find your strengths and helping you to utilize them in the best way possible. So get out there, search for positions that might interest you, do some interviews and get out of that situation as fast as possible. Another reason that some people might choose to stay in this job is because they have really good benefits or some really good pay. In my own personal opinion, those short-term benefits are way outweighed by the long-term costs of a high-stress environment. What good is a higher pay if you end up dying from a heart attack due to the years of unaddressed stress? Get out of that situation as soon as possible. Do not let yourself stay in it any longer than you have to. Trust me, you will not regret it. Next, I'm gonna talk about a situation that can be both obvious or subtle, and that's going to be that your employer is not valuing you as an employee. The reason that I can say that this can both be obvious or subtle is that it can take many different forms. On the more obvious side of things, your employer could be denying you basic things such as PTO, even though that was in your contract. On the more subtle side of things, you might be having what you think is a pretty good conversation with management, 
but every single one of your requests never seem to really go through. So it's kind of like you're talking to a brick wall. Some things that you might want to consider with this is first off, let's take a wider range look at this. Do you feel like you're not being valued, but you've never actually had that conversation? That's a situation that a lot of people find themselves in, that they're constantly talking about how they deserve a raise or they should get more time off or they do way too much work to be putting up with this crap, but they never actually had that conversation with management. Like I've said in a previous video, your management can't know what you're expecting if you never had the conversation with them. Unfortunately, some workplaces have not really gotten into the flow where the employee is thought off right off of the bat. So sometimes those conversations do have to be had. So you can't just make the assumption that they're always going to think of the employee first off. So with that said, should you stay or should you go in this situation? My gut reaction is generally, you're gonna wanna go ahead and leave the company. Long term, if you're not being valued, then you're gonna have much better opportunities somewhere else where you have the opportunities for advancement, better pay, better benefits, and also people to actually take your own ideas and thoughts into consideration. However, there are two ways that you can approach this. First off, if you're in a situation where maybe the pay or the benefits are really nice, but you're starting to feel a little undervalued in terms of management listening to your ideas and actually acting on them, then maybe have that conversation. Have the conversation with management, sit down with them and discuss your pain points. See if you can come together and come to a compromise on those pain points. However, if you feel like you can't have that conversation with management or that it won't go well, then that might be your answer right there. You should leave in that situation. One thing to keep in mind with this is you wanna give your management a little bit of time to take action on the things that you discussed. But the important part here is that you're getting updates about the status of those actions. If you're constantly having to ask your management and no progress is being made, then that again is yet just another sign. But give it some time because a lot of times these actions can't be done immediately overnight. For instance, at one of the companies that I worked at in the past, generally it would take about two weeks for something to change if you had a discussion with management because they also had to discuss that with other leadership and start getting the paperwork and other things ready in order to initiate that change. But as long as that manager is communicating that with you and keeping you in the loop, then that's what's important. If that's not happening, then you just move on to option two, which is you immediately start looking for a new place. If the employer is repeatedly demonstrating to you that they do not value you and your time, then obviously it is time to find a new company to work for. Additionally, if they then try to rectify the problem after you give your notice or your leave by adjusting pay or compensation, do not let this sway you from changing companies because a lot of times this is a last ditch effort to keep you. If you weren't getting those raises and stuff before, then you're not gonna get them after this initial pay raise and you're constantly going to have to fight to be given what you are worth. So don't let this sway your decision. So the final scenario that I'm going to talk about is when a recruiter approaches you about a new opportunity. This is about one of the best situations that you could think of, but there are several factors that you're gonna to wanna to take into consideration. First off, as I've kind of hinted at with the first two examples, you're gonna to wanna to evaluate the culture of your own company. Do they value you as an employee and is it a healthy workplace culture? Next, you're gonna to wanna to compare the pay and the benefits. Now, if they're fairly comparable, then this might not hold as much weight but you'll want to take it into consideration if you, you're getting a significant bump or a significant decrease in either of those because it might affect your standard of living. And speaking of standard of living, you're gonna to wanna to take into account your own personal situation. For instance, if you are married and have two kids, it might be harder for you to take a new job that is moving you several states away because you would be upending your whole family versus for someone who's still in their 20s or 30s and they're young and single, they can just go if that's something that they think they would like. But 
you have to make sure that you are considering your own situation. There's multiple things that come into account with this. For instance, you're gonna to wanna to think about your future and what you might want. Something that a lot of people don't think about is what if they wanna have kids in the future and this job is taking them away from family? That's going to dramatically raise the cost of childcare for most people. I realize that not everyone has family that can help them with that, but generally speaking, if you are near family in the area, costs of childcare tend to be a lot lower because family is usually able to help out with that kind of stuff. So while you'll want to take your current personal situation into account, you're also going to want to be thinking about your future and what you want. And finally, I recommend that you compare the opportunities for advancement between the two companies. Now, when comparing the two companies, there's a few ways to do your own due diligence. You're going to know about the culture of your own company, but you're going to want to dive into the culture of the company that's reached out to you a little bit more. A lot of people think that going on job sites and stuff is a good measure, but I personally don't think so because a lot of times those are just giving you a snapshot at a particular point in time for a company. Because if you look at a lot of those job sites, a lot of the reviews are not through time and consistent unless they're coming from a very large company. Rather, what I recommend doing is reaching out to current or ex-employees of the company. I really recommend doing both. The nice thing about reaching out to a current employee is they might be able to give you a more accurate picture about what the day-to-day -day is and how their management helps them. However, reaching out to ex-employees might give you a more honest and realistic view about how things are handled. The one issue with reaching out to current employees is a lot of employees will be careful about saying bad stuff about their current employer versus people who have already left the company won't have that obligation at all. So make sure you pursue both of those routes if you decide to reach out to employees. Overall, changing jobs is an extremely personal process. So I can't really give a one size fits all approach to each of these. Everyone's going to need to think about and evaluate these situations in a way that best fits them. But those were just my thoughts and some ideas of what to consider for each and one of those situations. But that's going to bring us to the end of the video. If you found the information in this video to be helpful or informative at all, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to join me in this self-improvement journey. If you have any of your own thoughts, ideas, or opinions, be sure to leave a comment down below. I like to read and respond to as many of them as I can. If you're interested in more videos where I talk about career-related topics, be sure to check out this video right here where I talk about how to have effective one-on-one -on -one meetings with your manager. If you're interested in some of my most recent stuff, be sure to check out this video right here. But until the next time, this is The Engineer signing off.